Okay, everybody. I'm cutting the news here kind of late at night. Been a long day. Um, I probably tagged my little rant in the grocery store uh, in this video somehow, some way, to where it looks halfway decent. I had to go shopping today because Sue can't. And I had to pick up some things at a grocery store. I haven't been to a grocery store really in years. And um, anyway, I kind of let you in on a little bit of my ranting about uh, pain medications and the doctors here in and around the villages. And so if you're thinking of moving here, um, I don't know if this is going on everywhere. I just know that in my state of Indiana, last time I had to go to the hospital, I didn't have any of this problem. And, and now it's, it's kind of like an issue. It's like we work for them and we have to make all the phone calls, do the paperwork and all this and that. I have a, I have a problem with that. So anyway, uh, the news. Oh, before we do the news, or some of the news, I don't even know what's on there. I haven't even looked. Um, I want to thank some of my subscribers. I hate to use that word, but you know who you are, the viewers. And especially some of my Patreon members that lives here in the villages. And to, to, to our neighbors here. The um, people showing up at the front door uh, with, uh, you know, dinner and flowers that some members have sent and um, the calls uh, wanting to help and everything. It's almost been overwhelming. We've got so many good people here. That's the one of the best things about living in the villages. Really, you're really never alone. There's people that live around you. They will help they want to help and so i know i give sometimes the developer and some of the people and what they do a little bit of a hard time and there's a reason for that but uh whenever things happen and you need help there's always people here to help always and um it's pretty cool oh an update on sue i'm somebody's probably going to ask she doesn't see a doctor till next week. Her pain medication runs out tomorrow. She's basically bedridden. She can't hardly get up around or do anything. So everything's an issue. And uh, the doctor won't see her until next. It was Wednesday. Now with all the um, phone calls, it now it's a different doctor. And it's going to be Tuesday. Still, in the meantime, uh, nobody is willing to write a script for a couple more days of some pain meds. They just, they won't do it. Everybody keeps pointing the finger to somebody else. And um, that, uh, that concerns me. That concerns me. So, let me get into some news here. Pardon me if I sound like I'm tired, because it's like... Uh, it's like midnight or something, and uh, I am tired, but I feel obligated to do this for you. So lighthouse operator to try to stop revolving door at the Spanish Springs location. That would be Dimshires. Before it was Dimshires, I don't remember, but before it was any of these uh, latest and greatest restaurants, it was Augustine's, and they had their own uh, microbrewery in there. I've been to Augustine's umpteen times, I, had, I didn't have any problem with it. It was always busy. People was always there. And it was a great place. I don't know what happened to them, but they left. And that place has never really been the same since. People, you better start, if you want the villages to remain what it is, you got to start shopping at your local places. That includes restaurants, stores, um, I'm talking about the mom and pop places, not the big corporations like Publix grocery store. You know, they'll, they'll always be around because they, they make money no matter where they go because it's, it's all about volume with them. But the mom and pop places, it's about you. You going into that store regularly and buying things. That's what puts meat on their table. That's what pays the rent, their light bill. If you don't shop there, I don't care how much you like it. If you want them to stay in town, wherever you live, Brownwood area, Lake Sumter area, it doesn't make no difference. You better start shopping your local businesses 
or they're going to be gone. Florida Turnpike will close for work on the Water Lily Bridge. That'll be one of the, I think, two bridges uh, to go over to Turnpike. And once they get one of them bridges set and get the ramp done to get the golf carts up and on the bridge. Setting the bridge is just a small part of it. But they got to get the ramps done on both sides to allow golf carts to come on up on the bridge and to ride off of the bridge. That in itself takes quite a while. But once they get one of them bridges up, it looks like Water Lily is going to be the first one. That will connect everybody down there, everybody down there, to everything else up north. Spanish Springs, Lake Sumter, Brownwood, all that. A portion of the Florida Turnpike will close October 20 for work on the Water Lily Bridge. The Water Lily Bridge will provide golf cart access across the Florida Turnpike. It is expected to open to traffic early next year. Here's something that's weird. This is strange. Let's just say that something about this article smells funny to me. Despite an outbreak of COVID-19 among students and staff, the Villages Charter School is no longer reporting the number of new cases of the potential deadly virus at its facilities to the Sumter County District. I don't know. The decision to stop reporting daily COVID-19 numbers, like every local school funded by the taxpayer money, comes at the height of an apparent outbreak involving eight students and three staff members. It's also forced about 40 or 80 students to quarantine at home, and since several of the victims are members of the Village's high school football team, the past Friday's game against Leesburg High School was canceled and the game scheduled for next Friday against South Sumter High School also has been shelved. Now, why would they refuse to report these things? It doesn't sell houses. Let me continue. But that changed this past week amid the outbreak when Charter School Director of Education Randy McDaniel apparently elected to just report the new cases to the village's developer owned Daily Sun. Hmm. Is it just me? Or does something smell funny about all this? I'm not reading everything, and hopefully I'm not re leaving any. Because see, look, it goes on and on, and I'm not, I ain't got time to read all that. You'll have to read it yourself, but yeah, you don't have to read a whole lot to get the feeling that something there just ain't right. Villagers upset about trashy rental home in their neighborhood. That's the problem with all these rental homes down here. Like I told you before, people sometimes will rent these houses out. They don't care who they rent them out to. All they, they turn it over to a property management company. Just rent it. They just want that, that cash flow to come in. They'll rent it out to felons. They'll rent it out to child molesters. I'm telling you, they'll rent them out to anybody because these people don't live here. They just simply don't care about the neighbors. They don't care about this being a retirement community. They just don't care. Villagers upset about a trashy rent to home in their neighborhood are sick and tired of the situation. The neighbors showed up Friday morning to complain about the property in the Vera Cruz Villas in the village of Santo Domingo, which was the subject of a public hearing before the Community Development District 2 Board of supervisors. The property is located at 2166 Estevez Drive. I've been there. I think that's on the other side of their uh, rec center over there. I, I haven't been up there in years, but it used to be a super, super nice area. It just shows you, man, what you see today ain't necessarily what it's going to look like 10 years from now. And the photos presented as evidence showed trash, empty plastic bottles, as well as overgrown grass and weeds. The property is owned by Trust N 2166 Land Trust Service, which has a Lake Wales milling address. See, it's a corporation. These people buy, they come in here sometimes and they'll buy a block of them patio villas. And they just rent them out. They don't care. It's all about investments. Ten years from now, five years from now, that house will be worth twenty thousand more, and I paid for it, and we'll sell it, dump it. They flip them. That's, that's all they do. So if you're going to buy a home in a patio villa area, I don't know if the real estate people, no matter who it is, uh, will tell you all the ins and outs about it. 
But if there's any way you can find out about how many homes in there are owned by investment firms or whatever, I'd try to find out if I could. Let me show you what this house looks like. If I can get this thing to work right. See that trash? You want to live next door to that? Hey, he probably got the trash out there for the trash man to pick up. No, pick it up. But, you know, it's just a nasty looking yard. Garage door's kind of up. Golf cart ain't even parked straight. Could be in the garage. Garage is probably full of crap. That's why he's got the golf cart parked outside. Um, look how tall that grass is. That's awful. I don't know who lives there, but whoever lives there. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to blame the, the renter. I mean, maybe it's in his rental agreement that the owners of the property is paying some land company to mow that grass. And he's not supposed to mow that grass. So if he's paying rent that's supposed to have that taken care of, then I don't blame him for not mowing. But my point is this. Sometimes rental homes can be a real big problem. I've seen it. City Chatty Bridge opened to the public Friday, uniting the villages of Titty Chatty, Bradford, and Lake Deaton Plaza and the villages north of State Road 44. Grandson promises to keep up of deceased grandmother home in the villages. See, and there's another one. Grandma dies, grandson. Let's see why the grandson ain't taking care of it. If he promises to take care of it, then why isn't he taking care of it? Uh, William John Vercelli, Jr. That name sounds familiar. William John Vercelli, Jr. spoke before the Community Development District 1 Board of Supervisors on Friday morning during a public hearing at Savannah Center. Vercelli, who lives in Summerfield, is, oh, he don't live there, is the son of 65-year-old William John Vercelli, who lives at 1949 Palo Alto Avenue in the village of Palo Alto. That's where they had that drug bust in Palo Alto. I don't know if this is the same place or not. The home was owned by his late mother and is now listed under the Vercelli Family Trust. He has been held since August 8 without bond at the Sumter County Detention Center. <laughs> and he's in jail. Oh, my Lord. You know, I don't know who this guy is. But boy, that, see? My picture. Oops. There's his picture. Burn it in your memory. What's he in jail for? Do we know? The property is considered by community standards as a reoccurring violation because, because of the string of complaints which included a junk car. You can't have junk cars in your driveway. You can't have any cars parked in your driveway uh, that doesn't have an up-to-date license plate on the back of it. Just keep that in mind. A lot of people bring old cars down here and they put them in their driveway. And the cars ain't registered. Because they really don't drive them. They're collector cars, kind of like. You can't do that here. If it ain't got a license plate on it and you got a collector car, it's got to be under the roof. Leave it outside. Somebody's going to report it. And there you go. So I'm trying to do my best, do the best I can do to keep it up to par. The younger Rich Ver Vercelli told the CDD1 Board of Supervisor Vercelli, who was arrested earlier this year in a golf cart in the villages, said he doesn't have a valid driver's license and it makes it difficult for him to travel to the home of his deceased grandmother to take care of the property. Well, you don't have to. 40 bucks a month and somebody will come and mow that grass for you every week. $40 a month. Come on, dude. Uh, he won't take care of it, and they'll have to go further with it. Remember Sue and Deb doing a video a couple weeks ago on Total Wine? That new, um, I don't know, liquor store, I guess you call it. That place right there. See it? It says, um, police are investigating a te tequila heist, which occurred at the Total Wine Superstore. At Lady Lake Commons, the theft took place shortly after 2 p.m. October the 4th when an individual entered the store and took boxes of patron Anagio and patron Silver 
According to an incident report from the Lady Lake Police Department, the boxes of high-end Mexican tequila had a combined value of $787. What, you're telling me somebody just walked in there and picked up two big cases of tequila and walked out the door and nobody saw it? Cameras? Hello? Mm. Uh, the, uh, the suspected the thief carried the boxes out a back door, setting off an emergency exit alarm. A manager rushed to the back door, but did not see anyone. He checked the surveillance system and saw the suspect had been dropped off at the front door in a red Toyota. The tequila th th thief headed for a rear storage room and took the boxes of fermented blue agave heading for the back door. The suspect was described as black with a hairnet uh, for dreadlocks. <laughs> That's always such a good look. God. Wearing a black t-shirt, jeans, jean shorts, white sneakers, and was not clear whether the suspect was a man or a woman. I'm telling you, when you look at somebody and you can't tell if it's a man or a woman, they gots to be ugly. I don't care if they are a man or a woman. Okay, I think that's enough for right now. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say on this video, for those of you that watch the whole videos and don't watch about two minutes of it and then zip through it or whatever. Um, the show we had the other night, the Wednesday, uh, what I call the, the uh, international, what I call it, the international meeting or something. Had the two uh, very well-read young ladies on there, one from Australia uh, that knew a lot about chronic pain and things. And the other one is a uh, an actor and a filmmaker in England. I see, keep saying England, the UK. And um, that has nothing, I just want to make myself clear, that has nothing to do with my regular Wednesday night live. My regular Wednesday Night Live is called Wednesday Night Live. That show we had that or this Wednesday, a couple days ago, was called International Meeting or International Meet and Greet, whatever it was. That had nothing to do with Wednesday Night Live, nothing. So don't come to those uh, International Meet and Greets thinking that it's going to be the Wednesday Night Live show. My Wednesday Night Live show is pretty pro popular. Everybody expects a certain critique on that show. The games, uh, Deb, you know, giving me a bunch of crap and all this kind of stuff. The villages, news, updates, and things like that. You come to uh, one of those shows there, uh, you can ask anything you want to anybody you want, but it's not about the villages at all. And it's not going to be the same as the villages at all. It's just a little something different, that's all. It's, it gave you a chance to talk to some people that are very highly educated, very good at what they do to, in two different countries. Uh, one of them right now is just now coming into their spring while we're getting ready to go into our winter. And it, just different things like that. You know, you could have got on there and asked any of them anything you wanted to about their YouTube channels, how they got started, the equipment they needed, how did they know how, to, how did they learn to do this or that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you could ask them, how much is a loaf of bread in Australia? <laughs> I mean, that's what it was all about, really, just for those kinds of things. So those of you that came to that show thinking it was going to be Wednesday Night Live and sent me emails wanting to know where Melody was at, no, that is not a Wednesday Night Live show. It was never advertised as a Wednesday Night Live show. I've said it a million times, and you should know by now, my Wednesday Night Live show is the last Wednesday of each month. So if you got messed up, I'll apologize this time. But if we have another international meet and greet and you show up thinking it's a Wednesday night live, it's on you. But that being said, I got to go to bed and get some rest. I'm tired and um, I'll uh, do the best I can do to get some content out there. Um, I don't know what it would be, but anyway, I'll see you guys on the other side. Goodbye.